When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth Shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make Shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. What's the easiest choice you can make? Window instead of middle seat? Picking a vendor who sends a great gift basket? Outsourcing business tasks you hate? What about selling with Shopify? Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage, Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash try. Go to shopify.com slash try now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash try. This episode is brought to you by Indie Insights. Indie Insights is our bi-weekly newsletter and love note to the film industry, movies, and the creatives that make them, not to mention you, our esteemed listeners. Inside, you'll find curated industry trends, articles, exclusive commentary, and underappreciated films from filmmakers like you worldwide. And the best part is that it is completely free. So join today at www.bonsai.film. It takes just a few seconds. And once you sign up, you'll get the very next newsletter on Friday morning. It's that simple. Go to www.bonsai.film to get Indie Insights, our biweekly newsletter, and join a network of film creatives just like yourself. And don't worry, we'll never sell your information or spam you with a bunch of nonsense emails, just the bi-weekly film industry goodness you need. And if you ever tire of Indie Insights, simply unsubscribe. No gimmicks, no games. So go to www.bonsai.film to get Indie Insights for free. Listening to Make It, a podcast by Bonsai Creative that helps creatives in film get where they're going faster by sharing the advice, knowledge, and insights of professional creatives across the film industry. I'm your host, Chris Barkley, and with me today is my good friend and Make It podcast co host, Nicholas Bugs. Hello, hello, Chris here with another episode of the Make It Podcast, and this is an Indie Talk Week, and that means I have my good friend and co-founder with me, Nicholas Bugs. Nick, say goodbye. Hello. No. What? Say hello. <laughs> Why would I do such a thing? You know, it's, come on, man. It's, you're just getting started, bro. And I love it. I think we both walked into this conversation, like, already smiling. Like, it's, it's going to be a good day. It's already been a good day. Yeah. We're going to have some fun. Yeah, it's a, it's a good day. Like... I'm wearing this hoodie, but it's not like cold outside. It's, it's a nice day. Like this is like a thin sort of windbreaker. So I don't want people to get the like sense that it's like East coast cold, like you're dealing with right now. Yeah. It's funny. You say that is you're the one wearing that. Right. And I'm wearing this. Like it's by no means like holiday weather. Like it's not like it's summer weather at all. Like, no, here. it's just that it's not so cold that it's not as cold as I look, but what I'm saying is this is very, this is like gabardine. What's is that? Isn't that like the fabric gabardine? 
I've never heard of gabardine before. <laughs> I was going to get thrown over to the producers. I'm like, what is it's, gabardine? It's thin. It's thin like gabardine. It's Got thin. It. I'm wearing this in honor of, of Tom Brady and, mm. and maybe his last season. This is, this is a, a Brady official that I'm wearing. Oh, nice. And, I like know, it. You know, I'm, I'm out of people to root for in the playoffs. So, uh, well, I kind of like Patrick Mahomes team biracial. Um, I'm down, <laughs> down for that. He's, he's like, you know, biracial Superman. I like him. Uh, I love Joe Burrow, but mostly just because I called it like when he graduated from college from LSU, I said, and you're this like, guy's just a winner. He's the guy. Yeah. He's just yeah. going to be great. So outside of that, you know, I, I got no, I got no dogs. It's like no, no disrespect to the Eagles. Uh, no disrespect to San Francisco, but you know, sort of. But that's interesting on your people. That's I'm your, sort of disinterested squad, in that so game. Yeah, plus you know, it's just there's a, some bad blood between the Eagles and the Tennessee Titans anyway. So at least for now, it's all the Titans' fault. And the Eagles just were opportunistic, but um, in taking AJ Brown from the Titans because we had we made a very very silly move by our GM. But yeah. So I'm just trying to find ways to celebrate exactly. is what I'm saying. Uh, and I'm celebrating Brady. Yeah. Got celebrating it. Brady, yeah. even though he's not in it. And I'll, I'll enjoy this weekend. Bro, I'm going to tell you this. <laughs> There's a long pause there. I was Sundance like, what is, is it? Sundance is what? So if you're in the indie world, like everything is Sundance Film Festival right now. Like you, I hate not being there. I have like, I know that we shared like this, this before, but we have like FOMO not being there, having our friends text us and, and hit us up on and tag us on Instagram and whatever else. And be like, where are you guys at? It's like, well, we're not there, but they, they had the accessibility thing where the jurors stood up and walked out. Right. Yeah. And they had that drama. That's like, I would call that positive drama or like white hat drama. <laughs> because uh, it was, it was yeah. more supportive drama yeah. right that's yeah. what it was they they walked out in support of not necessarily railing against so yeah i hear you right right and you know they they had the drama last year with with G, uh, jihad rehab now called the unredacted and if i'm not mistaken i think today or yesterday they had jonathan majors there on on a red carpet and they tried to I, the security guard he was being interviewed by i think black media like like a like um what's the name of the group so somebody from the from the uh black film festival uh in a i think in atlanta maybe they were they were interviewing jonathan majors and i don't think the security guard knew who Jonathan Majors was. Okay. Right. It's, which is kind of a, you know, it's this egregious thing. Right. And a lot of the people that were commenting about him being sort of ushered off of the red carpet were like, Oh, this is how they, they do you, you know, when you're black. But when I look at the video, I come to recognize that I think the security guard just thought it was black people playing around on the red carpet. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they just thought it was like, uh, like, no, she can't possibly be a reporter. Like, I don't know if she, the, the, the reporter was wearing credentials or whatever. And who is this person? I don't know. Jonathan majors. Like, like we got to clear this red carpet. We got some real stars coming in here. So was it, my question is, I haven't seen it. I'm, I'm looking up now, but was it about him or was it about the person interviewing him? It could have been about both. Like I it's, it's, I guess what I'm touching on is what does a movie star look like? And what does a real journalist look like? And, you know, do you have to fit those norms in order to, be respected by the staff at a high profile festival and look to, to Jonathan major's credit. He did not move and he did not react in uh, an irresponsible manner, a manner that would, that would sort of besmirch his good brand and reputation. But 
Uh, he also got uh, a helping hand from his PR agent. So kudos to PR. I know if AJ Fuhrman and Amy Printer are listening, they'd be like, yeah. Yeah. I think in this instance, it was about Amen the journalist. The PR agent, right? Like, yeah. I think it was the journalist. They were trying to move them along. And I think that was when Jonathan Major stepped in and was like, hold on. Like you didn't even give them an opportunity to do what they're going to do. Right. So no, I'm not going to move. We're going to do our thing real quick and then we'll go. Right. And then we'll so go. to your point as well, they are interrupting not only the journalist, but they're also interrupting him. <laughs> and because he had the clout to do what he did, he did what he did in the way that a Jonathan Majors would. So I yeah, just man, think that the security that. guard didn't want any smoke. I don't even know if it's a clout deal because you know what the real clout is? The real clout is being the type of star where the security guard just knows better. Right. Like you've been yeah, to a club I mean, where you've you. been outside in the line in the cold yeah. and there's a guy that passes you and he just gives, you know, pounds up the, the bodyguard and then just goes in. Well, I've, yeah, that's I was the, the real guy clout. doing the pound. That's, yeah, that's my bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 like, like, I, you know, back in my club days, that was what it was all about. It was about, yeah. you know, Hey, I, I'm not standing in line. Like, like I, I have value to this organization. Right. Right. It's not clout just because the bodyguard chooses not to pat you down when it's your turn to go in, you know, you see yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, it's not, you know, to me, if, if Jonathan majors had acquiesced then the security guard would be like, thank goodness, man, this guy actually listened to me. Like, you know, like yeah, it wasn't, yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure that I just, otherwise just the PR wondering. agent wouldn't have come in and, and said anything to him. Yeah. But I, I think that's the thing is that, and that's what I'm, I'm reading now is that the, uh, the PR agent stepped in and asked the worker, the, yeah. the security guard, security guard to let the person ask their question, right? They're not moving Jonathan majors. They're focused on that journalist. And the PR agent was like, hold up, let this person ask their question so, you know, and again, it's opened up a conversation. I don't know a bunch about the backstory with like, cause they're talking about, is this a race issue? You know, it, is that, and I don't know, is this, well, that's the question I'm asking you. Is this a race issue or is this an issue of, man, I got to watch this video. It's tough, now. It's like, tough for, <laughs> is it tough for black people to look the part in the eyes of the general Hollywood worker in public, right? Like, like there is that element of like, come like you've been there before kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. And I just know from my background in journalism and being stopped plenty of times myself, like, you know, they want to see your credentials. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you have to, you know, they, there's a, there's an access issue, right? Yeah, well, they wouldn't have been able to give the mic to him had they not passed all of those things in the first place. Yeah. So it, it does well, beg the question okay. about what's going on here, you know? And again, I think it's just, they're just saying, look, even if it's not a race thing, let's say it didn't, that's not what it was. If anything, it's the journalist who's already passed, you know, whatever threshold it was to even get in front of him, they've already passed that stuff. And to not give them the opportunity to ask the question for whatever reason, I think that's what you have to ask. Like, why did you stop them? I mean, I would love to know if they actually talked to the security guard and be like, well, what, what were you doing? Yeah. You know, do you know that this is, like one of our bigger stars of today, like, like he's owning a, a piece of the zeitgeist and he's about to be in a giant superhero movie. Like, do you know, like this, this gentleman, like, do you really know him? Right. That's what I mean. Like that, mm -hmm. that's what I'm questioning, but here's, what's funny when you, when you do watch the video, here's, what's funny. What's funny is there's a bunch of hall monitor shit going on, right? Like <laughs> security guard talking to the PR agent and they're like trying to figure out why these two aren't in class. And, <laughs> right. You know, and the journalist kudos to the journalist and Jonathan majors. They're like, I, I think the journalist can be overheard off screen saying I could have, I could have got his answer by now. We could be gone. <laughs> right. <yeah>. Like, like, <laughs> and, and, and then Jonathan majors is yeah. like, let's just do this. And he steps yeah. up in front of like, just takes a step away leaves them to be hall monitors. And she asked the question and he starts answering it. Like they're not <laughs> right. even there. <laughs> like, I love that. I've seen that a lot. Like throughout my life where it's just like, when something's ridiculous, yes. instead of getting all upset and flustered, uh, I'm just going to keep doing my thing over here. <laughs> right. <laughs> as long as you don't touch me, we're not going to have any problems. I yeah, know there'll be no smoke. There'll be no, there'll smoke. Be no smoke. Yeah. I'm just going to keep yeah. doing my thing. Just don't touch me. Yeah. I'm going to keep doing my thing. 
and yeah. and that's what he did. So anyway, it's yeah, just kudos. funny how just the drama it follows. It follows. Speaking of of drama, busy month for film in January. Now mm-hmm. every year around this time, everyone sort of uh, expounds upon their opinions on the Oscar nominations movie of the year. And one of the things that always complicates the nominations and how these movies are rated and even how, well, we'll talk about how the Oscars are rated as a show. But one of the things that always complicates is there's so many nominees in every category. And I think that and so now, right. They That's used changed. to do five. Right. And right. now there's 10 movies of the year, 10, this, 10, that. And so when you don't get in that group, you have a, and you feel like you made a great film or a great piece of art, then you can fall into a trap where you're like, really? Like with all these, with all these selections, I still didn't, I still didn't make it. And anyway, the, the 10 that are in there, uh, I think all 10 are deserving. And you're meaning for best film, best right? film in particular. I think all 10 are deserving. Some people might say, you know, wh- you know, since when do we, you know, add movies like Top Gun Maverick and Avatar, you know, into the mix. Like these are box office tentpole movies. But my response to that would be, those are both great movies though. Yeah. Like, there's, I mean, there's nothing even to say about that. Yeah. They're great movies. Like, <laughs> period. Like, they should be on the list. Like I've always thought, I, like, I don't know why comedy started to be excluded. Like after Annie Hall, <laughs> like in 1980. And I don't know why it's hard for like, um, like mission impossible. I love that series. Tom Cruise is amazing in mission impossible. Um, the James Bond movies. I love Daniel Craig as James Bond. He doesn't want to do it anymore, but I still love him as, as James Bond. Right. The, the born identity, the born movie series, minus the, the Jeremy ones. Renner one, like there Jeremy you Renner's, you know, not my Jason. <clears throat> right. Sorry. Uh, but love Jeremy Renner. And I hope he's great after that accident. Love him. Right. Not my Jason Bourne. Right. Mm-hmm. So anyway, yeah, he's our Hawkeye. Right. <laughs> I'll watch the boy. I'll watch the Bourne movies whenever they come on. That's like Shawshank Redemption for me. Mm-hmm. Like I, like it comes on TBS. I'm watching it. No, it doesn't matter if it's in the middle of the movie, the beginning, the end, I'm watching it. So why, if we love these movies, is it such a, a, a leap of intellect to nominate them as, as movie of the year? I, I'm, I'm going to get killed for saying this. I think, I hope not. I hope people will understand where I'm coming from. I've seen all these movies and the one that seems to not fit more than all of them isn't Top Gun Maverick or Avatar. It's women talking. It's Sarah Pauly's movie, women talking. Love Sarah Pauly. Not a, not a, not a, not a critique of her. her. Yeah. The the movies, the movies, good and it and, and the movie's about something like it means something but when you watch it you do recognize that it's like this this should be a play like this this would be great on stage um it's short so you you can get through it but the title is apt it's just women talking it's just women talking <laughs> for an hour and a half And and they so, make some and they make some really great points throughout mm-hmm. the talk. I won't I won't have any spoilers, right? But, but here's basically there's a village of women who have been brutally abused. Although you can't, they use flashbacks to show the abuse. None of them kind of currently look abused they, until mm-hmm. like later in the film. But anyway, a group of women in a village are being abused, and they have to make a decision whether to stay and fight do nothing or leave. And so it's, it basically plays like a modern 12 angry men. And they're just having a conversation about what they intend to do. 
Yeah. Right. But I think where it doesn't live up to 12 angry men and which is a very, very high bar, right? So that's not even necessarily fair where it doesn't live up to 12 angry men is that the stakes are so high and, and that's going to come off poorly, but it's like in 12 angry men, you had someone's life on the line, right? Like here's a decision that's going to call someone their life. Right. Whereas this was like, if we stay, we're staying with our husbands and sons. If we leave, we're leaving our husbands and sons, but we can always come back. And if we do mm-hmm. nothing, then we're staying with our husbands and sons and saying, you know, we're, we're, we're complicit in this abuse at that point. Right. So the theme is powerful, but the stakes don't feel as high to the audience basically. Right. I think if the, if the husbands had caught wind of the women talking and then knew what they were up to, then all of a sudden the stakes go through the roof. That's, that's how I would have maybe changed it. And and it's like, who am I? But that's, that's how I would have changed it. You know, almost like uh, Nick, have you ever seen the original village of the damned? The one from the sixties? No, I haven't. Not the Kirstie Alley one, RIP Kirstie Alley. Uh, it's great. The remake, not great. The original is great. Like there's a reason it was remade, right? And at the end of it, this isn't a spoiler. The movie came out in the sixties. <laughs> at the end it's of a it, spoiler, if you haven't seen it, <laughs> too bad. It's been, too out 50, yeah. it's been out 70, 60 years. Exactly. Like it's like, years. you're too late. You're too yeah, late. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, 60 years. So at the end, basically these alien kids that all have blue eyes and blonde hair, wink, wink, they can, they're super intelligent. They're alien children. They're like indigo children, right? Before indigo children was a thing. And they can read your, they can read your mind. They know what you're thinking and they know what your intentions are. Right. So our protagonist rounds them all up in a school because his job is to teach the kids. And those kids demand to be taught by the way, which is a really interesting ink, you know, wrinkle in that movie. It's like, no, we, you, you will teach us. Oh, we're going to fuck you up. So he rounds all the kids up in the classroom to be taught and the kids don't understand what's going on. There's like confusion because they're learning from him. He's saying things, but he's not thinking about what he's saying and the kids know it. I love this nuance, by the way. I don't know if you can tell how much I love this, but I love this. Well, I see you grinning over there trying to figure out where this is going. (laughs) He's thinking of a brick wall and the kids know He's thinking of a brick wall and not the stuff he's teaching. So like, what's up, bro? Why are you thinking of a brick wall right now? Like what's behind this wall? So they start to mentally break down his brick wall and you get these images of the brick wall crumbling. And what he's really thinking about is the fact that he has set off a bomb and he's going to martyr himself to kill all these kids and save the town. And, you know, right before the brick wall crumbles, like the, like the smartest of all the blue haired, uh, blonde haired, blue eyed kids figures it out. It's too late. All the demons are gone. That's how you raise the stakes. Yeah. They would just be talking about the kids. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I think that that's what you wanted was you wanted something to draw you into their story more. And that is usually what it is, is it's not the conversation about the thing is the drama that is in there. Yeah. Right. And you weren't feeling it. Right. If you're not feeling the drama, then you're just listening to someone's story. Right. So I hear you. And, you know, that is what one of 10. Are there any said, in there that you don't agree with? Well, it's kind of funny that you mentioned that. Right. It's like that I don't agree with. I mean, I haven't seen all of them. It's like the one you're talking about now, women talking. I haven't seen it. You know, I don't have a, a stake in that. Um, but I, every year there's some that I'm like. I'm just curious about what measuring stick they use. Right. And I I think about it, like the, some of the articles we've read about the Oscars where it's like, this is an award show. Yeah. Okay. Like we can't forget that piece of it. And the most popular that that award show has ever been was, and I can't believe, I don't remember what year it was, but whatever year the Titanic, right. was nominated and won. That was like the most popular award show of all time. You've seen Titanic, and, right? 
Yeah. And, and the thing is, is that when I think about the show and what their intentions are, I'm wondering how much of their intentions are shifting around, you know, making it, making the show popular again. Right. So part of it is, you know, how do you make your show popular? Well, it's about the people that you're celebrating, right? One, the people who get nominated and two, the people that win. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you can, well, three, and, and and now, three, the audience that, and three, the audience that wants those. Well, of course, artists right, to right. Win, right. You're like, yeah, you're celebrating so, the fact that, that there's like a social credit there. Like, Oh, I love that movie and they won an award. So therefore I'm smart and have good taste. Well, yeah, that and the demographic, you know, about those, those films. Right. So when you think about, let's say I agree with you 100% about women talking. Okay. okay. I've seen it. Let's say I agree with you 100%. I'm like, well, why, why did this make it? Well, maybe there's a specific demographic that they want to actually watch the show. Right. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's up there. Maybe, maybe something else, maybe the 11th film would have bumped this one, mm-hmm. but the 11th mm-hmm. film's demographic potentially shares the same demographic of film nine. Yeah. I've already got those people. I don't need another one. Right. So it's it feels like, like sometimes they check a box, right? Well, well, a demographic box because it's a show, right? Like at the end of the day, they're getting ratings. They're getting, you know, there's, there's some value. Like it's the, so, like he's mentioned, there's a social credit to this, right? If no one's watching it, honestly, if people stop watching the Oscars, do the Oscars continue to have value? Right. If the tree keep falls, giving out the award, if nobody, watches. right. If a tree falls in the, in the forest <laughs> and no one's around, doesn't make a sound, <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't think so, man. Like it's not, it's not going to have the credit. People, people don't care. So like, how do you make people care again? And again, I haven't seen women talking, but if I agree with you, then I would start to think maybe that's part of the conversation. Nominate these things that are, that are good, right? It's not like that it's not good, right? You still have to reach a bar. Right. And maybe the bar lives inside the top 20 films. I mean, there's a lot of, you have to think about it like this. There's a lot of films that get released every year. Okay. If you made it into the top 30, you're doing really, really well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Really, so really well. <laughs> exactly. So imagine if they're like, well, let's take the top 30 and then whittle it down to the top 10. Right. And the top 30, they, it's, it's a toss up. Maybe like any of these 30 could win it. But now let's look at what's going to really bring interest to the show. Let's look at what's really going to bring that clout that we need from the general population to this award show, because they're going to now be able to see themselves in the nominees and then potentially see themselves in a winner. So I think that that's we're going to start seeing a little bit more of that because the ratings have been, you know, so terrible. And honestly, you know, I'm going to throw this one out there for you. But like last year. What was Benedict Cumberbatch's movie again from the Oscars last year? The Western thing. Um, uh, I, I got was it. Gonna nine, have to, nine, it wasn't nine, Power nine, of the Dog. Oh, Power of the Dog. Oh, Power of the Dog. Yeah, I remember Power of the Dog. That was great. Yeah, was thanks, great. Elise. So, so it's a great movie, right? But let me ask you two questions. Mm-hmm. Who cares about Benedict Cumberbatch? And two, who cares about the story of Power of the Dog? What is the audience, right? I'm talking about the general population. If you were to pick a group, who cares? What is the demographic that cares? This is the problem that Tar is going to have this year. There I you think go. Tar is the best movie <laughs> I saw this year. Yep. Just like last year, I thought Power of the Dog was either the first or second best movie I saw that year. Yeah. But I'm a movie guy. Mm-hmm. Right. The, there you go. The non-movie people that I talked to about Power of the Dog didn't make it to the end of it. Right. And the non-movie people that I've talked to about Tar, like I, I was um, in a Twitter conversation with a guy I don't know, but he was like, yeah, I couldn't finish Tar in the first sitting. And yeah. I was like, yeah, it's super long. I'm not, yeah, so, I'm not changing my opinion on it, but I will agree with you that it's super long. <laughs> it's super long. But so, so is that that's it. Right. But that's it. It's like, that's what I'm talking about. I think that there is an audience. There's a, and I, what do you, what do you call it? It's, there's an I like art saying house. Benedict Cumberbatch, by the way. I like just saying it. <laughs> You're right. There's an art house audience, right? And there's a, and what is art house? Art, art house is almost like that, that purist when it comes to mm-hmm. film. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. I don't need all the, the extra layers of fluff that you put on a film. I want to dig into 
a, a human's life and you can tear that human apart, whatever you do, but I want to just feel the, the grit. I want to feel what they're going through. Yeah, Everything yeah. else goes away. Right. And that is the art house group. And I think there's, that's why power of the dog likely should have been there. There's an art house group. There's a, there's a demographic, but does the art house film winning beat out diversity, equity, inclusion associated with a community that has never really been celebrated in the deaf and you know hard of hearing community right, that right, was right. Coda. Coda is still a great movie. It's one of your Coda top two. It's a great, you know saying? it's a great movie, but if I'm going to celebrate, if I'm going to give that award to somebody, do I really want to give it to that art house film? If I'm trying to increase the ratings associated with my show and the general clout associated with my show. So again, yeah. Coda's great. So you can't knock it. You can't say that there wasn't a toss up there, but by giving them the award, I think that's a, a nod to a larger population to actually say, okay, you know what? It's worth watching you guys because yeah, I can it's relate. Like, it's like, to it's your like you're broadening now. now. You're saying, okay, now we have 10 films. So we should have a film for every region of the globe here. Basically. That's right. Yes. And you want to hear something crazy? Every, everything, everywhere, all at once. Incredible yep. movie. Asian led movie. That might have been the reason why decision to leave wasn't in the wasn't wasn't picked because they already have that. They're like, oh, we already got that. Right, we solved that. You're coming. Uh, decision to leave. Park June, I think, directed that, wrote it. That's better than. Again, no disrespect to women talking. It's a good, it's a really good movie <laughs> with really good right. writing and filmmaking and, and performances were incredible. Rooney Mara, but decision to leave is just a better movie. Just objectively oh. a better movie. Yeah. So we might have to look at the, the top 10, you know, offline and just look at the, the demographic uh, profile yeah. of each of those films and see how that plays out. And if it basically opens up to a wider audience, you know, because that's it. You want people to watch, you want people to be excited. You want them to see themselves in the nominees because yeah. you don't know who's going to win. So you don't watch it for the winner, right? You watch it for the nominees and then the winner. Cause you, yeah, my okay, point okay. is yeah, 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 yeah. you don't know who the winner is yet. Right. So you can't be already into the winner. So it's like, I'm into one of these nominees. I'm excited. Right. I'm excited to see if they win it. Like this would be awesome. Right. Yeah. Across the board, best film director, all of the things. So anyway, I'm just curious well, to see well, I, how that think, plays out. Yeah. Me too. Because, you know, I think we have the tent pole movies in there and mm -hmm. this is like the Academy's sort of best swing at this, because I think what happened was leading up to it is you had nomad land. You had Coda, which was sort of like, not everybody has Apple TV plus. Yep. You could argue that decision to leave is suffering from the same plight, which is that it's like on movie. You can't watch it outside of that service right now. And unless you listen, movies 99 cents for the first three months. Okay. Right. I think everybody can swing it, but you have to make an effort and you have to even know what movie is. You don't know That's, what you I don't was know. just going to say that. Yeah. But, but last year you had drive my car, which was incredible. Uh, most people haven't seen it. Like it, it, right. it's still on HBO to watch right now, but at the time it was being awarded, you couldn't watch it everywhere. It was hard to, it was hard to find. And I think the harder your movie is to find, you know, you're going to have trouble come award season. And then, you know, the inside baseball of how long do you leave your movie up for digital screening by the guilds? And did you spend the money to send out physical screeners for those who still want to have a physical screener and, you know, waste all that paper and all that <laughs> right. and money. But anyway, for those who want to do that, there are still companies that like a 24 sent all their digital screeners to me, but uh, are all their uh, physical screeners to me because they know that it's more effective 
right? Like the movie's going to play better. It's going to be in your hand as well. You don't have to go looking for it. I got to do something with this. Right. So there's a strategy to being awarded as well. Like, I don't want to ignore that part of it, but I'm curious to see how it goes because you started with, I think, you know, Nomadland and Moonlight and, and Coda and the ratings went down and then it's, and then by the time the Will Smith, Chris Rock slap saga happened, no one was watching that. And it's funny. I don't, I don't know how Nielsen tracks ratings because I know on the front end of that award show, it was almost no ratings. The presentation looked so parred down and it didn't, it just didn't look like a big grandiose show. Like it normally right. does. Yeah. Then Will Smith gets up and, and slaps the hell out of Chris Rock. And all of a sudden I didn't know anybody that wasn't watching it. Right. Of course. But, but were they watching the show or were they watching YouTube and Instagram and Twitter and TikTok? Right, Cause Nielsen replays, can track across the various platforms. replays of the slap. Well, I don't know if it can. So yeah. that, that's why I'm wondering. It's like, maybe those, like, I, I guess what I'm saying is I'm shocked that last year's Oscars had a low rating because it had a worldwide incident happen at it. Well, it had a low rating because you know, you got to look at, no one expected that to happen. So when you start watching it, right. Well, when you, when you start out, when it started out, if you're not into any of those movies, you're not watching it. Right. Right. And then to your point, major incident happens. You don't go watch it. You go to YouTube to find out what happened and you watch that little clip and you share that clip, but you don't go back to the show. Cause it's over. I went back to the show to see if Will Smith would slap him again or Chris Rock would come, <laughs> so out of, come off the top rope on him when right. he was receiving his, he, he won last year. Remember like he uh, won. I know. He won. Yes. But what I'm saying is that I don't think so that'd been back. a great so, opportunity for Chris Rock to get retribution. Yeah, the, although he the didn't. ratings, the ratings were attached to the movies that were nominated. Now we've had that conversation about best film and that there's a potential for this demographic you know, uh, or them they're playing the demographics for the nominees. Yeah. So that's just best film because we can't have that same argument for best director. Cause right. another one of the conversations, and this kind of gets in some of our culture check conversation, right. That we're going to have here. Culture, uh, culture, uh, yeah, check. Yeah, yeah, culture check is that there's no women nominated. Right. Yeah. And there are people, what's the word again, man? Snub, Snub. right? That's the best thing. If you didn't get in, you got snubbed Mm -hmm. and it's like, they're snubbing female directors. And, you know, it's a question we have, you know, females on, you know, on our team, we have females in our life. We talk to them about this stuff. And, you know, when you're having an objective conversation, it's like, well, out of all the films that were in the running for the year, how many were directed by, women, right? We, I don't know that number, but let's say that the percentage is low. Okay. Just by virtue of that percentage being low, their likelihood of being selected in the top 10 is low. Right. Right. So it, it may not be a matter of male and female. It just might be a matter of odds. Of course, assuming all things are equal though. Right. Like, yeah. Like we, we, we shouldn't, we shouldn't ignore Simpson's paradox here where it's like, uh, the, the odds that don't match up if, if one person does like a superior piece of work, right? That's the, that's the X factor. It's like, if you had four female directors, but they were all, but they all made Spielberg level movies that year, then you mm-hmm. can't, you can't say, well, the odds were low and that's why you didn't get in. It's like, no, they made the no, four no. best movies this year. But yeah. And that's what I'm saying is that it's a factor, yeah. right? That's all yeah. is that it, when you have an objective conversation about it, that's one of the first things you got to look at. Like I don't first go to, they explicitly and purposefully excluded women. It's possible. I'm yeah, not saying the definition not saying. of, of snub. <laughs> exactly. They purposely, they yeah. purposely did it. Now I don't know that they did or not. Right. So I'm not, but my point is, is that when you By hear definition, this outrage, they couldn't because they have to watch the films to judge them. So yeah, but what by I'm definition, saying is they that, didn't ignore them. Right. Exactly. By definition. But what I'm saying is that, um, some of the outrage that has come up about this and people talking about the fact that there's no female directors, I just wonder if there's any objectivity to it at all, or if it's just a matter of checking boxes, checking, but yeah, we're, we should be on the list. 
like by virtue of being female, by virtue of being black, by virtue of being gay, by virtue yeah. of being Irish, I should be on the list. And the fact that you don't have us on the list is an explicit snubbing, right? Like Nick, that's, that's my fear. You just, you just said my greatest fear. And I think you could argue that plays a role in the lowering of ratings as well. Outside of just sort of the macro entertainment market where, where we're so bifurcated and, and disseminated sort of all over to, to everything that has a screen. But my fear is that the awards in the Academy will be manipulated by the concern of inclusivity over merit. And because it's art, there is a subjectivity to it. But in film, there, there's a lot of objectivity. Like you can objectively see a good or bad edit. You can objectively see a good or bad wardrobe or a good or bad set design or whatever. Uh, you can objectively see good or bad directing, uh, good or bad acting. Acting may be more subjective than others. But the, the point is you can, you can tell. But, but in terms of the whole product... There is a subjectivity to it. And there comes a point where like everybody that's in a minority group can kind of feel like at times, like the mom in the PT, uh, in the PTA, right? Like at school, like, why didn't my son get a medal? Why didn't my daughter get a medal? My daughter deserved praise there or my son deserved praise there too. Why didn't they? And it's this me too ism no pun intended, mm -hmm. but it, it's like, no, there, there needs to be a winner to give the award merit. There needs to be selectivity and a narrowness of that selectivity for there to be merit. And all you have to do is have a kid in sports or have played sports yourself. If you get a participation trophy, it means nothing. I've seen it in my own eyes. They don't care about it. It's the one that they had to work for. That was where the competition was the was top level elite competition or that you had to work for. That was elite competition. It was the grade that was, you know, it was the A that really was tough to get in a class in college that the professor never gives A's in that you remember. And I just don't want this award show or any award Grammys, whatever it is, to get to a place where inclusivity is more important than merit. Yeah. I think we all agree with that. And I think that's why, you know, we're kind of having the conversation about this culture stuff. And I think this is a conversation that we'll have every time we talk, right. There's always somebody railing against the, you know, someone and it's this, and what's interesting, you know, we, we heard someone say this before. It's like, so, so who do you think that, you know, I'm not going to you know say who's, made this remark, but they were asked like, so who, who do you think the enemy is? Right. Yeah. And they were like, yeah. Oh, it's the heteronormative white man. <laughs> right. right. So it's like any, what we right. don't want to see is just this arbitrary railing against the heteronormative white man in every opportunity they get. Right. Yeah. So it's like one of the things that just popped up was, you know, we, um, at least, you know, shared with us, uh, was it Elise. a post? Yeah, producer release a post mm -hmm. from um, Chinonue uh, Chukwu, who is the director of Till. I'm glad and, you said that. Yeah, I know, right? And <laughs> and she said, you know, and and I'm going to quote, right? I'm going to read this quote. She said, "We live in a world and work in industries that are so aggressively committed to upholding whiteness and perpetuating an unabashed misogyny towards black women." And what's really interesting to me about that comment is that you know, I reflect back on conversations we've had about DEI and how specifically yeah. the Hollywood community seems to love black women, right? Mm -hmm. Anytime there's an opportunity to have this inclusion in my eyes, every time I turn on something, there's a black woman, a new black woman gets added or a black character, a black female character gets added to everything. Right. So I'm like, what? Misogynistic. Yeah. That's like a hatred of women, right? I mean, right, right, right. it's like, how is that even a thing? And the timing of it, right? The articles that are quoting her on this 
are referencing the timing of her comment, which mm-hmm. is Oscar nominations. Yeah. Right. So the Oscar nominations come out. She's not on the list. And therefore, right. According to the articles, she then says this. Yeah. And it's just sour grapes. It's intellectual sour grapes. Yeah. And that's, that's intellectually what honest as well. Right. Yeah. Especially when you look at, you know, you know what Abbott elementary has been winning. Yep. Right. In other areas. And there's some black women who've gotten up on stage and received their awards, right. They're getting their flowers. Yeah. So when I see stuff like this, you know, you kind of wonder like, you know, again, how many people are, are in that camp where yeah. Yeah, when yeah, the yeah. sour grapes don't happen, what do you do? You attack the heteronormative white man. Woman King was great. I, I will say, um, I don't know why I always forget this incredible woman's name. Uh, what's the, the lead for Woman King? Not Michael B. Jordan, but uh, what, what? The, the woman. <laughs> what's her name? <laughs> Viola Davis. Viola Davis. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Just like, who, who has a gun that can. I'm He's sorry. I got, I just laughing at that one. He was like, who's the woman lead? Not Michael B. Jordan. Cause that's a woman as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Viola Davis, if you watch woman King, I, I would challenge you to find a better overall performance outside of Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett's performance in tar was, that was gonna be hard to beat. <laughs> Because you had no clue you were watching Kate Blanchett after a while. She was just too good at that. Um, but buy me a better performance than Viola Davis in Woman King. Like, like in any movie that had a female lead this year. Like, the stuff she had to do. Like, emotional, yeah. vulnerable, but guarding it because she's a warrior. Fight scenes. I mean, it had it all. And, um, look, I was surprised by it. I thought it was going to be formulaic. It was like a good movie with incredible performances. So, you know, I will, I will say too bad for that. Maybe just, it's one of those things where it's like, maybe the voters are like, Oh, I forgot about that. Give me my ballot back. Oh, we can't. <laughs> right, you know, like, like yeah. it could be that, but you know, earlier I was talking about checking boxes and, what I meant by that there, you could kind of get two meanings from it. What I meant by that is like, it feels like sometimes, and this is again, part of that fear I have about meritocracy versus right. inclusion and, and, and sort of, you know, answering to the Twitter mob. It's like, they'll give a, they'll give Denzel, uh, an award and that checks that box. And so now they don't have to dominate and, and award Denzel again. You know, they'll give Holly Berry one. They'll give uh, an Asian foreign film, best film, like with Parasite, even though that right. was and remains one of the best films of the decade. Well, they, they remember that they're awarding things that are worth it. You know, they're, yeah. they're it's, definitely it's going to be, it, so, they're good yeah. about that. I will say that you're awarding yeah. that, like those movies are worth it, but I just hope they're not checking boxes saying, okay, like Nomadland. I love Nomadland. I, no, take that lie back. <laughs> I liked Nomadland. I didn't love it. <laughs> I didn't love it. It wasn't better than Sound of Metal with my with our boy uh, Riz Ahmed. Yeah, like it was depressing, man. It was a drag. It was a downward spiral, the way Requiem for a Dream is, just without the drugs and sex, which make the down, downward spiral worthwhile, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> um, <laughs> But you had Francis, Mc, Francis McDormand, you had Zoe Chow. Like you had, like we need to check that box, mm. right? And and so it, I just hope that what it, it, it looks too transparent is what I'm saying. Also mad at corporate America, so I just want to respond to because you laid out a lot there. I want to dig into it, unpack it a little bit. You talk about like black women getting opportunities being added to this, 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 this. I agree with you, but I'm mad at corporate America about this. And the reason why is because they are putting black women and stuff 
but how come every time you need like a fat person in a, in a workout commercial, it's going to be a black woman. There's fat white women too. There's fat Asian women. No. Why can't, why why can't the fit girl ever be black? You know why that new, okay. Mars company, giant company. (laughs) They got a new M&M. Why is that purple (laughs) M&M black girl? (laughs) Why Why is that big old, (laughs) that big M&M purple and black? Why? I'll, I'll tell you why. I'll like, tell you why like, you want the, you like want the why, answer. Why can't, you, why can't a black Eminem be the skinny Eminem? I, I give you the answer. Or the you one the that's answer? sexy. Because the sexy one's already been taken. But I'll give you. I'll give you. The, <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'll give you the answer if you want the answer. Yeah, I want the answer. Okay, so it's something that you and I talk about all the time. What sells? Intellectual property sells, right? Mm-hmm. Like who's you know you talk you talking about I, IP? Like I want something that I know people like that can sell. Right. That's the goal is to sell this stuff. Right. It's a product. Yeah. yeah. So there's likely there's a high likelihood that that m M&M just happens to fit. A certain IP that's very popular right now. Mm, OK. And that popular IP just happens to be Lizzo. <laughs> OK. You just lit <laughs> That's it. I mean, it's it's just <laughs> marketing math, bro. It's just that's so, it. So when you see these women, right? I've seen it too. You know, Under Armour bro, has wild, their Under Armour has their mm-hmm. you know um, thicker women, but uh, not often African American, yeah. right? Yeah. Like you said, the Eminem is thicker. It's because of Lizzo, man. This is what people are associating that with, and yeah. I think there's also. I mean, you can look at it from a demographic standpoint as well when it comes to this level of um, like physical inclusion, where, who's the biggest speaker box for that right now. And I think that is also Lizzo who is African-American. So that might be more associated with what African-American women want to see in themselves. So on the flip side of that, you would ask the question, and this is market research that I'm sure some company has. Right, right, right. Do do Caucasian women or Asian women want to identify that way? Right. Mm. Have they picked up the same mantle of, hey, this is me in all in my all in my shape, in my form, and you need to accept me and love me for who I am. Lizzo yeah. might have done that really well for African American women but there may not be that same speaker box for the Asian Caucasian and so on and so forth. So that's probably why we're seeing it that way. It's just, it's it's, it's business, man. It's not that there there can't yeah, right on, right on. And, and that's the magic of, of branding and marketing by the way, as well. Um, And so, you know, if you're a filmmaker out there and you don't have a branding and marketing plan in 2023, really, really? (laughs) But anyway, the, there are, there, there is room, like at least like those people of color got a job, right. And they, mm-hmm. there is a market for, it. but I, I go further. Like I go to music, like there is a purposeful reason why I spice Cardi B and Nicki Minaj and Megan, the, the stallion, the- get more marketing dollars than Rhapsody. When, when it, to me, it's objectively clear that Rhapsody's the best rapper of all those I just named black female rapper. Why not, why not put some marketing dollars behind Rhapsody? Oh, cause she's a conscious rapper. Of course. It's talking, it's talking about, Talking about important things that it actually where's, might where's, uplift where's, this where's, community. Where's Talib? Where's Talib? Where's Common? Yeah. <laughs> it's just on, like, man. it's like, it's purposeful. That's what I'm saying. I'm mad at these corporations because you know they're, why, they're, they're, they're complicit. Cause it yeah. doesn't, because, because and look, I don't want to make it a white black thing, but in other genres, they get the best of their genre. The best writer made it to the top, Bob Dylan. Right. Mm-hmm. The best guitarist. Right. Stevie Ray Vaughn. Right. Like you like Led Zeppelin, like the people who do the best in their job, get all the all the accolades, best songwriters, Fleetwood Mac, Eagles, you you know, you name it, Nirvana. They make it to the top. The cream rises. But then you come to R&B and hip hop genres and it's just about like. Who's who's popping pussy? 
Well, and that's the thing, you know, we could, we could go into that. I mean, I, okay. So let me, I'll go there and then try to translate it back a little bit into the film please, space. Please. Okay. Cause I'll, I'll take us into BFE. You, you will, but the, the, so here's the thing, right. And this is one of those culture check type things. Hit culture it. check, culture check. So <laughs> <laughs> what this is, is you got to understand that there's, um, you know, why do you have liquor stores on every corner in black neighborhoods? Right. Yeah, why yeah. are the grocery stores so far apart? Right. There is a systematic part of this as well, where you want them, you know, having to eat fried chicken, you know, suck down to 40, eat, you know, drink great, you know, great drink <laughs> suck? and, and, and can't suck get down, down to 40? the it's suck down. That's what I'm saying. Suck down. Yeah. You be drinking. Dog. Hey, hey, exactly. Right. But then suck like, this. and then not be able to suck get your veggies. 40. Right. So, so what I'm saying is that like, there, there's a, there's a systematic thing, right? So there's a reason why that's the music. That's the type of thing that is being pushed yeah. out there into that world. Now in the film space, there's a, it's not quite the same, I don't think, but I will say this, that it's, you know, it's a conversation we had about like what makes a really good movie, right? Period. Just movie versus what makes a really good black movie. Mm -hmm. Right. So to me, the movie, the best man is not a black movie, but if you were to ask people about it, they'd be like, yeah, I would say that's a black movie. Well, why? Because the cast is all black. Right. Right. But if you watch one of these movies that has all white people, you wouldn't call it a white movie. It's just a movie. Yeah. 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 I see what you're saying. I see what you're putting down. Right. So there's a Cause, stigma. Cause best man is just about people getting married and, and the drama that happens in between. Exactly. And the drama totally they had in college human story. Not one hundred you know, black about that. 100%. You yeah. could just swap it out for any race, ethnicity, whatever. And it would still be the same movie. So same movie. Yeah. So I just kind of wonder about that, that, sh that change, right. Which is in film, what's being sold to the black community, right? Because almost like as soon as you decide to make a film, you need to sell it to them, right? If you're going to put all these black actors yeah. in it. So, and I don't know by percentage, but I could probably guess that the percentage, the majority of black movies fit some sort of stigma, right? I, I would almost call it the urban stigma. Like how do we make it black to fit yeah. that stigma that we're matching with music, right? The music can be conscious, just like you said, but they're not going to make that stuff. They're not going to promote that stuff. They're going to promote the stuff that keeps them in their lane. Right. So you got to perpetrate violence. Like I said, you got to have misogyny in these things. You got to have drugs, alcohol. Like these are all the things that you have to have in these movies. If you're going to be bringing a bunch of black people together, right. To do something. So it's an yeah. interesting thing. So I think there's a systematic thing that's happening with respect to entertainment for the black community that needs to be broken. I mean, honestly, I love the best man. I think that's a, it's a great movie. I'm happy that Hulu picked up. Uh, the series Hulu or um, Peacock, I believe it Peacock. is Peacock. Yeah. Picked up the series. Um, it's awesome. But anyway, it, these don't have to be black stories just because black people are in them. And I would love to see that come, you know, to the Oscars. Like when's the last time, you know, I think uh, for music, what, what is, is um, black Panther nominated this year at the Oscars? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what for, I think they might've made it, but it's one of those, right? Yeah. Is black Panther almost disqualified from the conversation because it's a black movie. Mm, 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 mm. You know, I don't know. I mean, uh, uh, when's the last time I mean, moonlight, moonlight, you know, do we take that one as the check? That's a that, we check the box. We did it. We did it. But if you, but if you get, <laughs> Listen, if you get any group of black people in a room and you ask them, do you want to watch Harlem Nights or Moonlight? They're going to say Harlem Nights. Yes. Oh, 100%. That's, that's, yeah. it. that's all. Yeah. yeah. But Moonlight's anyway, great. I think that that's, that's the, what it is. Yeah. You, so I'm curious to see. We'll, we'll, we'll watch the Oscars, of course, and figure out, you know, what the game that is being played. Yeah. But, you know, there, it's a show. It's a thing. There's, there's a lot of factors into it. And I, I just feel like, um, oh, there's the other thing I wanted to mention real quick. Mm hmm. 
so the Oscars, I think, I guess we, can we agree to this? The Oscars is like the gold standard for film. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. I'd say so. Okay. That's the one that's, you want. That's the one you want. Yeah. If I recall correctly, power of the dog won like hundreds of awards that year. <laughs> I don't know how many it won. It won a lot. I, I think, I mean, we could probably look it up. Like at least if you can hit that right on IMDb, it'll tell you how many awards they won and how many they were nominated for hundreds. So they shouldn't be like, put out or put off no one by should not be put winning out like, like an winning, Oscar winning is, should be rare <laughs> by definition. Right. But they've won hundreds yeah. of times. Again, at least just let me know if you find like it we're like, in this place where you win <laughs> and then you're not happy the way you won. Right. But even, even the, the like, female oh, directors, the way that I should have won. Exactly. That's my point. Like these female directors, right? No. Yeah. How many things have they actually won throughout the year? to be so open about their disdain for the Oscars. 271 wins for Power of the Dog. 315. 315. Dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't walk away like, One oh, Oscar. man. <laughs> <laughs> right, like, <laughs> so they're heated. They're heated. One Oscar. Yeah, it, it, exactly. It's like, it's ridiculous. That's not enough like, Oscars. <laughs> right. <laughs> so anyway, so the movies that you mentioned, the so women talking, you know, that's another one we could look up. Like, how many awards did it win for it to be that salty about the Oscars, yeah. you know, uh, that's anyway, I was just going to mention that it's not like these it'll films win are something. not winning. It'll win, it'll win something. Yeah. And probably it'll has, win. you know? So anyway, just wanted to mention that. Do you want to, do you want to give the, the good word from Siobhan Lynn, who is our podcast guest from last week? Do you want to give the good word? Oh yeah, of course. Of course. We you want to give this little note from Elise first. Oh, producer Elise women talking 44 wins, 148 noms and two Oscar noms. So that means the most Oscars they can win is two. And if they win one, then we're going to hear that they should have won two. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> so <laughs> They can win no more than two, but less than three. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I didn't see you playing that yet. That game, but less than three. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so let's, let's switch it, right? We switch the vibe a little bit. And one of the things that we want to make sure that we do on these conversations is do what we do. And one of the things that we do on a regular basis in our conversations with friends, family, the filmmaking community is we drop some inspiration, motivation, like different things that we've learned from, from our friends in film that were like gems that were dropped on us. Right. Mm -hmm. And we want to tell people, go listen and watch that Siobhan Lynn interview with us. Uh, but she dropped a gem that kind of hit me and, you know, kind of in my heartstrings so like, yeah, like this is the type of stuff yeah. that it isn't just things that people say, especially if you mean it, you know, and she says, you know, be yourself, right. Which we've, we've heard a lot. Right. But it's really about the next thing that she says, she said, be yourself, embrace your imperfection, embrace your experience, accept yourself for who you are right now and accept your past. And I love that. I love everything about that. And I, I guess that one piece that hits me is that embrace your imperfection. Yeah. Right. The other ones because it's said than done. Oh, yeah. it's easier said than done. All, it is yeah. definitely, especially when it says be yourself, you know, like that, what does that even mean? Who am I? It's like all this. Stuff. It's like, no, no, no. Just embrace your imperfection. And one of the reasons why I love that so much is because as artists, it is often our imperfection that speaks through our art. Right. Like, was it Guillermo del Toro was just talking about Pinocchio, Great. which is phenomenal, incredible, phenomenal. And one of the things that he said in that behind the scenes thing that he put together was like, he's like, to be honest, you know, you'll see that Pinocchio isn't just about this, about magic or fantasy, or it's not about this doll, you know, this, this wooden puppet. It's not, it's like, it's a, this is a father and son tale. And he says, just so you know, most of my films, are about that yeah. because they're about me and my dad. Yeah. Right. And a lot of us, I won't, I won't say a lot of, I think all of us speak from the imperfection and the imperfections, not just in our physicality, but the imperfections that we see in our lives, right? Whether it was, you know, we didn't have a great relationship with someone, something happened to us, you know, in the course of our lives that made us who we are for good or for bad. And it's like, when you embrace that, you can speak through it because it is probably one of the most powerful feelings that you could possibly ever have, right? Yeah. Love, hate, whatever it is, the thing that you went through, the things that come easy, 
they don't sing through our, our soul, right? It's these things that are hard that really come out. So I, I just, again, in all of that, that she said, I was like, that's it, man. Embrace your imperfection, embrace your experience, accept yourself for who you are and accept your past. And I thought that was awesome. It is. And let me, let me walk the audience and you through what that actually looks like in practice, because I, I did this and it was life changing, life changing. I am not overstating this. Two critiques of me, my entire life has been that I'm cocky and I talk too much. <laughs> and I would try to meter those things. I never felt like I was cocky. I always felt like my confidence was earned if I was confident in a thing because things I'm not confident in, I have no confidence in. Like you can see it. I'm like, I can have the lowest self-esteem imaginable on things I don't feel like I've earned the confidence in. But if I feel like I've got earned confidence, then you'll see it come out in me, right? And this idea of like, oh, I better not say this or I better like, be on a word count here. I need to be on a pitch count because you know, I'm talking too much and yeah, you could look at that as like this negative trait, but there was a day that I had an epiphany that I was like, I went to this modest high school. I barely got into college. I had to write an essay to get into college. Okay. I grew up with my friends who those who aren't dead are in jail, you know, or they're not doing great. Like there's an, maybe one exception, Mm -hmm. right. Who, who we both know, right. (laughs) You know, like that's doing well. So my cocky too much talking ass got you this far, right? Like you're doing great things, right? So why would you modulate that? So I had that epiphany one day. It was a long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. And I remember back in my former life working in, in healthcare tech and education that I did a presentation and one of my teammates did something called pulling the chain. They had this thing called you could pull the chain. And that's where you, you privately with a witness told somebody, Hey, I didn't like how you did this, or you can improve here or improve there. So she pulled the chain on me after this presentation. Mm. Now her critique of me was, I think you talked too much. I think you talked way too much on that call. And I was like, yeah, tell me something I don't already know. This is post, (laughs) this is post epiphany. I was like, yeah, tell me something I don't already know. I know I talk too much, but guess what? I'm the best at this in the country and the numbers prove it out. Me talking is working for you. You make money from me. Every time I do something and talk too much, you get a cut of it. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Isn't that funny? So I reject your criticism. Great. I talk too much. It's not perfect. Right. Embrace your perfection. It's not perfect. Sometimes me talking too much is going to close it. The deal. And sometimes me talking too much is going to be mid or suboptimal. Right. But we'll take that chance because you don't have a better person come up to bat than me. That's what it is. Yeah, I talk too much. You yeah, know, but I, I'm good enough. I, yeah, to, but I'm good me, enough to talk too much. Are you? Because yeah, right. <laughs> Are you? Yeah. And now so here's me, how. And here's how you that. embrace it. Here's how you embrace it. Okay, go ahead. You become a podcaster. Right. <laughs> exactly. You can talk <laughs> all you want. <laughs> <laughs> you, you run your. You, yeah. you, you start your own company. Right. And so. What that journey looks like is you go from being insecure about a thing and trying to meter it and modulate it to having the epiphany that this is kind of who I am. And this is like a comfort zone for me. This is like where I think I'm my best. It's not perfect, but it's where I think I'm my best. And then you take action on it by changing whatever environment has caused you to have that insecurity in the first place. Right. Yeah. And I'll, I want to jump in on that, that the cockiness okay. comment real quick. Yeah, right. Please. So I just want to let, you know, I'm going to give my perspective on it because to be honest, I've heard the same thing, you know, about me. Right. Mm -hmm. And what I've come to understand is that there's like, for me, it's almost, you know, because of my personality and the fact that I do live a life in service of other people, that it's almost impossible for me to actually be cocky. Right. Because that's a, it's a selfish thing to do. Right. Yeah, and I don't live a life that way. Right. My name is Nicholas, which means victory of the people. And I stand behind that. Right. So I started to figure, try to figure this out. 
Right. So it's the, not that I'm cocky, but I can come off as cocky. And I was like, well, what does that even mean? Right. Especially if I'm, again, what I'm doing is being in service to other people. Like you were giving a presentation, you're doing this thing, you're making the company money. Why would someone come up and tell you, you talk too much, especially if you actually sealed the deal. Right. And I started to realize that I did close that deal, by the way. Exactly. So what the, what cockiness or the perception of cockiness in my mind is, is actually someone else's fear of your confidence. Hmm. Mm, preach. They, ha- they have some reason to fear your skills and your ability. So now you're cocky because they're upset that you're in the position that you're in. So now you can't be confident. Why? Because what is the negative version of confidence? Cockiness yeah. or arrogance. Yeah. So if I see you in a negative light, I can't see a positive version of your confidence. Period. I can't. Mm. I've got blinders. He's like that tint. That's what I see. So when someone has animosity towards you for whatever reason, your confidence is naturally off-putting. Yeah. And that's what it is. She was, for whatever reason, she had something about you that she did not like. And it could have been that you were the best and she wanted to be. It could have been that she just doesn't, for whatever reason, someone said something bad about you and she accepted that as her opinion. Who knows? Yeah. Right. But I've, I've gotten that. And I know I've had people come to me. I mean, it, it work and just say, Hey, Nick, just to let you know, you know, some people think you're cocky or arrogant. I'm like, <laughs> when you are not operating for yourself, right. It is almost impossible. But at the same time, I, I always offer, I was like, well, you know, what is it that I'm doing? You know, what could I do, right. you know, to be better, to not come off that way? Because if I'm coming off that way to one person, two people, that's one thing. But if this is a general perception, I'm really doing something wrong, right? I, now I need right. to really look well, inside well, myself. Because the other thing, too, that's the other thing about accepting your imperfection is when you don't accept it, you have a blind spot. Yep. When you do accept it, you know you're doing it. That's right. And you can either... Take that and basically either way you take that and you make it into something good. Yep. Again, that's what Siobhan's saying, right? That's that idea of be yourself. And I like the fact that she provided that additional context because be yourself is one of those that you could just, you know, put up on the wall and you see the it and you, there's never, yeah, there's never any meaning to it. Yep. But when she added that piece, which is embrace your imperfection, you know, embrace your experience that potentially made you imperfect. It's like the idea of having a scar. Right. We live with those, right. Whether they're physical or emotional, we live with those. Embrace that. Embrace that you went through that and got through it. You're on the other side of that scar. Right. And I think that that's, again, I just really took to it and I, and I love it. And I think it's one of those that, you know, in light of the fact that you and I have friends who have taken their own lives and no longer with us in light of the recent thing that we just talked about with uh, Twitch, Mm -hmm. I think this is something that people need to hear. You know, we want to be two of those people who tell you, embrace your imperfection. It's okay. Embrace your past. It's okay. Embrace it. Turn that into something new. Turn it into something better. Just embrace, you know, who you are. Couldn't agree more. And you can check out our conversation with Siobhan Lynn, the amazing Siobhan Lynn, actress, singer, songwriter on YouTube, on our YouTube page, Make It Podcast YouTube page. You can search for that really easy. Uh, Papa bear. Do you want to tell us something we should know about the movies? Um, well, I don't know whether you should know it, but I would hope you would. Who has, okay. Who has the most IMDB movie and TV credits yet was never seen on screen. Okay. How many, how many guesses, like not guesses, but how many clues do we get? Uh, why don't you t- take uh, at least three? Can you dress like Pat Sajak next time you <laughs> <laughs> join this conversation? Sure. <laughs> or Alex send Trebek. Me, send me some photos. I, yeah. Next time, ask this in the form of a question. Or we have to answer in the form of a question. <laughs> ask in the form of a question. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a question. Hey, ask that question. <laughs> In, in the, the form, form of a question, question. <laughs> uh, ask that question in, in the form of a statement. No, uh, the, <laughs> no. How many clues do we get? So do you, do you Can have a full clues? question? Can we get clues? Uh, wow. Like, like, no, is no, it, you, is I it, got, I got, is it a yeah, performer? Like, like, is it, 
Is it a voiceover artist? Yes. <laughs> oh! <laughs> That's why they're not Swear seen on God. screen. Swear yeah. to God, I did not look this up. Well, then no, that's, that's awesome. Because look, because this look, is why they're not seen wait, on screen. But you could have yeah, chosen. It could have been anybody. It could have been anything. It could have been, 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 been sound department. It could have been art department. department. Yeah. It could have been hair and makeup. VFX. It could have been. Yeah, dude. I don't know how you got that. I don't know. Come on, bro. Yo. <laughs> I'm so uh, hyped about this. So it's a voiceover person. Of course. Will is it Wilfred Brimley? Wow. No. <laughs> Do you have diabetes? Um, All right. Di- <laughs> well, wait, wait. Now it's my turn. My turn. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Because, and I appreciate you going there because that narrows it down for me and I can actually yeah. think about some names. Um, but I've got one, which is Kevin Conroy. Ooh. Well, ding, ding, ding. No. Mm. <laughs> Is it Morgan Freeman? Oh, wow. That's, that's a great guess. No. <laughs> right. He's like, no, 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 no. Like a Twinkie. Right. Like a um, Twinkie. <laughs> Who's the other guy? Oh, is that, little, is, it, is that a little Henny B from the PB? Right. But he said, yeah, not he really. said yeah oh. but he said never on screen. Oh, right? never on screen. So it couldn't be, it couldn't be our boy Morgan Freeman. Mm-hmm. You know, I went to the island of the St. John Island, and he has a mansion on top of the hill on that island. Really? Apparently, yeah, apparently he has some pretty wild parties. Hmm. Or he did. Yeah, the yeah. House looks like a pyramid, I think, if I'm remembering wow. correctly. Anyway, uh, all right, give us, give us, educate us on this. Educate us in the audience on this, PB. Well, well before you give the name out, you have out, one though, more, Nick? No, Nick? no, no. Before you give the name out, though, um, it's voiceover. And it's film and TV and TV. So yeah. that gives us the idea that there is, this is animation. Yeah. Um, Somebody from the Simpsons or family well, guy. Well, that's what I was going to go is, is that the case? But I was going to ask that, like if we had a guess about the anim- the animation, is it the Simpsons? Because the Simpsons is one of the longest running, the longest animated series longest running of all show. time. Right. So yeah. is it the Simpsons? Well, I'll tell you, you are on the right track with the animation, but it's not the Simpsons. Mm, right track with animation. Okay. So is the next who's, place who's, that I who's go. The dude, who's the dude that started Family Guy that also Seth wrote McFarlane? Ted, Seth, Seth McFarlane. He wrote Ted. Is it Seth McFarlane? No, no. He's been on no. screen. So the next one is that I go to is Disney. And I think about like, Mickey Mouse and Ooh. you know, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't Goofy. You're right. Like, yeah, like <laughs> Goofy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> like <laughs> what I didn't know what that answer. sound was, right? <laughs> oh, gosh, Mickey. Oh, hi. Hi. How are you? Oh. I'll tell you. Well, <laughs> why don't you take away, Mickey? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to beat the answer out of this. Yeah. Uh, so like, he's so, right, down. Beat, beat are we there? Is, <laughs> is, no, it, is it, it, it like Mickey Mouse Clubhouse? Is, are we anywhere near? Um, we're not. What? Well, I'll give you one more hint. It's okay. It's not Disney. It's Warner Brothers. Oh God! It's Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny and Looney Tunes. Yeah. Is is it Bugs Bunny's voice? And who is that? Oh, I don't know. Well, his it's name. Bunny. We don't know. Who, like we don't know. They're <laughs> not guy. supposed to know. It's like Elmo. Yeah. See, you're not supposed to know the name. You know what the problem here is? We're we're not old. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you're too young. <laughs> well, I who's grew, Homer Simpson's voice? Dude? I grew like, up with this voice. Yeah, okay, but Homer Simpson's voice. Like I don't know his name. But anyway, go. What's his What's his name? Bugs Bunny. Uh, Mel Blanc. Oh, I know Mel Blanc. We know Mel Blanc. <laughs> well, why did you say it? What are we thinking? Because we haven't thought about Mel Blanc since we watched Bugs Bunny when we were so kids. Frustrating. It is mad frustrating because we, we if you would have asked us this when we were, I would say, 18 and younger, mm-hmm. we would have known that. Because yeah. he also was, I mean, remember, it was it Tiny Toons came out? Yeah. Like, Animaniacs. it was a big thing. Yeah. And the maniac, so like, yeah, we would have known yep. that. But so, how many uh, ti- how many titles do you think that is? 
tell us. Might, might have. No, no yeah, clue. you just have to tell us, drop, man. Drop That's, it on his PD. It's, yeah. Okay, it's 1,069. Wow. And wow. if you want to try movies only, who has the most movie only credits? And how many, about how many do you think it is? Oh, uh, you're, you're, wait, you're, you're pressing your luck, PB. Now yeah, we're, going know, to, we're going wait, to wait. actors that you see on this. Yeah, screen. what's his name? Um, oh, he's right in the Rashid, he was, Yeah, he was in Rashid's movie. He's in everything. <laughs> oh, 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 Eric Roberts. Eric Roberts. Well, Eric, Eric Roberts is the answer. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah, look. Come on, bro. Come on. How are you going to do more movies than Eric Roberts and be on screen? Oh, what's uh, what's Sylvester Stallone's brother's name? Frank Stallone. Frank Stallone? That's a good try. Yeah, but, he's no. not up there with Eric Roberts, bro. And then there's the guy who does Machete, or I, should, I call it Machete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I forget he's his name. He's in a lot of he's stuff, He's in a lot man. of stuff. A lot yeah, of but stuff. I don't think he can best Eric Roberts. All right, who is it? Okay, these are things you should know. Robert De Niro. There's no way. 617. More than Eric Roberts. I'll have to look at Eric Roberts up. Kudos. Elise, Elise. Up. Let's get producer Elise on this. PB. Yeah, you're, look you're up fired. Eric Roberts. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's no way. No. <laughs> like, like, if it's true, kudos to, to Bobby De Niro, man. Yeah, man. For real. Well, it's been That's a lot. while. He has. And yes. I wonder if he's done like he's a the goat. crap ton of comi- uh, cameos, though. He's like, the that goat, could man. be it as well. Hmm. I thought he would be on par with Pacino, same amount of movies as Pacino. But that's yep. that's amazing, man. Kudos to the goat. Oh wait, wait, producer Eric Elise. Roberts, seven hundred twelve <laughs> actor credits. Eric Roberts wow. has seven hundred twelve. Ding, ding, ding. Nicholas, well, I have to give it to you then. So hey! now who says that? <laughs> your, 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 your punishment is that you have to run around the block in your underwear only. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, <laughs> we'll, film asked, it and we'll add it to the short section of our YouTube page. He's there done a lot go. recently because when I asked it a month ago, they told me Robert De Niro. Well, well I, I wouldn't well, doubt it. it, 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 it Robert's it been working. It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't change that that we need your punishment on film and we need to there put you it on our YouTube page. <laughs> so I will run behind you with the phone and yeah. you just take a short. If you want a speed walk, you can do it. And oh, you can you wear go. socks and shoes, but you have to be in your boxers <laughs> and only your boxers. Or what should we like? What should be our general punishment when PB gets his research wrong? <laughs> is it, should it be like a pie to the face? Should you have to do like the, the cold challenge, cold plunge challenge? Mm, well, I don't know. I got to think. You should on come this up one, with man. it. You know, be, I, don't, I, don't, I can't. I can't. It's, not, it's, it's not personal, PB. It's just, it's good entertainment. We're all about <laughs> content on the Make It Podcast. And if we can have like a punishment for you when you get your research wrong, I think it'll be great for the audience. No, I think it's fine. Yeah, I know you're a team player. I think when you look it up, you'll still get Robert De Niro. Right. But look, you know what? (laughs) I'm sorry for this. (laughs) I really am. (laughs) But I I think the punishment should be that he stands up behind the mic and I get to walk up and Will Smith. <laughs> a movie, a movie appropriate punishment. Exactly. It's just, for, you know, but you gotta, for, we gotta do the whole me. thing though. We gotta get it. I get, you know, the, it, it was special, bro. You gotta, you gotta give it yeah, that whole he did thing. Back. He made a perfect <laughs> meme. It's like he rehearsed that. That's what I'm saying. It's perfect. That's you know, why and people, here's no, thing. Nick, that's no, no, why people no. thought it was fake. Well, the thing is, is that it still might be fake. And here's why I really? need you all to look, we can share this on social somewhere. Hold on, let me go grab my tinfoil hat. Yeah, wait, wait, look up. Okay. Listen, look up the Batman Robin meme slap. Yeah, I've seen this slap. It's the same slap. It's the same bro. slap. It's the so Will Smith is Batman. <laughs> and <laughs> Chris Rock is Robin. <laughs> you know, because it's crazy. It's, it's literally the same looking thing. So we got to give, you know, PB the, the Will Smith slap, the Batman slap. Robin. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. I love it. Holy research, well, Batman. It. But I yeah, have, right. I have the fast twitch response, so I think I can probably duck. You the, duck you, that's the whole point. We a no, lot remember, quicker than Chris Rock. And here's the thing: remember, we just these are filmmakers here, and we got a lease. 
we put that slap in post. You know what I'm saying? It's not a thing. You know? <laughs> yeah. Because we, we can't really hit PB because, you know, exactly. we, we're, we're like, we can't be sued. There's like an assault on the job. That's why the punishment exactly. has to be embarrassment. That's right. That's right. We're just going to do it. And then we're just going to come up with the slap afterwards. Yeah, we'll have, the slap, sound, we'll have the slap sound effect. Exactly. Well, that's what it, Publish, you know. Publishing this is already the embarrassment. <laughs> 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 yeah, I was like, I'm already embarrassed. Dang it. Well, well done. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Maybe, maybe you just choked yourself out of it. Yeah. You I think you did a good job. Well, yeah. So, well so Chris, Chris, I have, um, before we wrap for today, I want to, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to talk about one thing. It's a little we gotta, bit, you got to get out of here. Yeah. We got to get out of here, but it's, it's serious. And I know that, you know, we're going to publish this, you know, a couple of days from now. Right. Um, yeah. so it won't be, it won't be today. Uh, but today is the day that they're going to release the police body cam video um, around the death of Tyree Nichols. Yeah, man. So, it happened down here in Memphis, I think. Yes, it did. Yeah. It happened in Memphis. And uh, all of those police officers were fired. There's five of them. And all of those police officers have been um, arrested and they've been charged with numerous charges. Yep. And as we're talking, uh, they have already released this footage and i haven't seen it i'm not looking because we're doing what we're oh, doing i, I want to watch it man well a lot of people are going to watch it and what's happening right now is that they're saying that you know you got to be careful because they believe that the outrage from this video is going to cause protests and civil unrest and all sorts of stuff um, across the country mm. okay so you know i'm just gonna again i know that this is when people see this is it'll be late it'll be past the time when you've seen the actual video um, but if anything, I'll say that if you, if you have seen this, if you haven't seen it yet, if you're going to watch it, civil unrest is not the answer. And even protesting at this point is not the answer because they've actually done what they have failed to do so many times before they have fired these police officers. They have arrested these police officers and they will be charged. They're going to be charged with murder. these things yeah. for murder and many other things, kidnapping, yeah. all sorts yeah. of things. They basically are going to throw the book at these people. But the one thing that I want people to know is that this is the first time I've ever seen this happen. Right. We've seen multiple Absolutely. killings of civilians by police officers, and you've never seen them one fired nor two arrested immediately for their actions. This is also the first time that we've seen these officers are be, are African American. Now I want to say that I find it very odd that in the, in, in in an instance where African American officers were the ones who perpetrated this heinous crime, this is the instance in which they're fired and this is the instance in which they're arrested. It's very interesting and I think this is what people should be paying attention to. Yes, they should be paying attention to this young man who was murdered at the, the, you know, the hands of these police officers. But you want to protest something, you want to talk about something, talk about the fact that, or the question, why are they only doing this? Why are they only doing what's right when it's African-American officers perpetrating the crime? It's just unfathomable to me. So I yeah. just wanted to mention that and yeah. to tell people to calm, calm down, hopefully, we're not seeing a bunch of protests and, you know, damage done, violence associated with this. You know, let's, let's see this trial out, but really start asking that other question. Yeah. And I hope this doesn't inappropriately lighten the mood, but like Tennessee's having quite a month when it comes to police, because in Laverne, Tennessee, which is like a suburb of Nashville, like outside of Nashville, you had five or six officers, maybe more fired from that police force. They were all having, sex with the same woman. And most of those officers were African-American or black, black guys. And, uh, the, the, the officer is a, is a white lady. So she's become like a meme Lord because her memes going all around, but you know, do, do white officers having sex with a white cop in Tennessee, get you suspended and not you fired. Um, does it get you anything? There, there was no, the yeah, there, were, there was no uh, uh, assault here. This was all consensual. They had like a little sex gang going. They decided to be swingers or something. Amazingly, the husband of the female cop is staying with her. He's like, I, you know, I love my wife, man. I'm staying with her. You know? Yeah. Well, that's a whole, that's a whole thing as mm -hmm. well that we won't get into yeah. that. That's, I'll just say that there's a fetish around that. Yeah. So yeah. Like what he's not saying either he's either he's the king of all the cucks 
or he was also in on it. Like he was in the room. Exactly. (laughs) Like, 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 which is kind of the same thing, by the way. But yeah, exactly. um, it is the same thing. So yeah, that's, like that's what I'm saying. So like yeah. he's, or he, or I should say that he's the king of the suckers, or he's the king of the cups. He's cup. he's one of the two. So yeah, crazy, crazy month for cops in Tennessee, um, yep. and awesome month for film. Awesome month for us here at Bonsai. Totally um, enjoying the content we put out this month. All of it has been super impactful. Tons of feedback from the audience and the listeners, please keep it coming. Let us know what we're doing good, what we what we could do better. And, and we'll make sure we make those adjustments. Do visit our YouTube page. It's looking great. Yep. Looking to build those subscribers up. We've got videos up there now. I know we're late to the game. We're, we're like started on YouTube as if YouTube's new, <laughs> but uh, we're just new to YouTube. So yeah, forgive us for that. Platforms please a bit. That's enjoy all. the videos as we, as we post them up, you can find us, uh, easily anywhere you play podcasts, just look for the make it podcast. If you want to know more about our company bonsai creative, you can go to bonsai.film. Very easy. You should also check out our newsletter. If you get a chance, that's just bonsai.film forward slash newsletter. Uh, we also have pop-ups that come up that let you sort of enter your email into the newsletter. Uh, in, in this newsletter, this, this past newsletter, we talk about what's going on with Alec Baldwin and rust a little bit. We will touch on that some more, maybe in the next Indie talk or in another newsletter, but you know, it's a key question around financing around independent film. So a really important subject. So we touch on stuff like that. In the newsletter, give you short films, promote filmmakers from across the world. It's a, it's really easy. It's free. We don't spam you and you can always unsubscribe. So, uh, you if you want to do that. You yeah, but, if you, but you wouldn't awesome. want to do that. It's it's <laughs> awesome content. It's once every two weeks. I mean, come on, yep. guys. Um, you know, we're not like Lululemon who's going to, you know, spam you <laughs> 10 times. Or Uber. Uber is like the worst. They spam you 30, 40 times a day. Uh, so, um, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. Um, if you want to reach out, give us that feedback that I just talked about. That's really easy to do. Contact at bonsai.film. Yes, that's an email address. Or you can go on social media and find us all across social media just by searching for Make It Podcast or Bonsai Creative. So social media platform of choice, you go for it. If you want to reach out to Nick directly and give him feedback on his shirt today, you can do that at nick at bonsai.film or maybe his biceps, either one. Those work. <laughs> uh, if you want to reach out to me uh, about uh, my cloakage, uh, you can do that at Twitter at flame in your heart or just search for Chris Barkley on Twitter. I'll come right up. Shout out to Papa bear and shout out to producer Elise. And with that, Nick, can you leave us with the credo? <laughs> it's hilarious, man. I don't know why I got this in my head. It's like, <laughs> Oh, Chris, how pregnant are thou pauses? It's like, <laughs> It just gets better and better every time. It's yep. like, <laughs> you know, the producer, Elise. It's and the dramatic <laughs> pauses. How pregnant art thou pauses. So I will, in the spirit of Captain J. Kirk, uh, deliver <laughs> the credo to our audience and say, be creative. Is that yeah. right? Nope. Is that B engineered? No, that's another E. I'm sorry, I'm losing it. Rewind because, the tape. You know, don't rewind the tape, damn it, Jim. <laughs> be better, be creative, be engaged. Thank you for listening. Nick, talk to you soon. Yes, sir. We'll do I'm it again, man. We're trying to get out of this. I, I, we see your, we see your <laughs> messages about Eric Roberts. We see him, okay? Quit trying to get out of this. You're right. It's him. Talk to He's you the folks. Man. That's right. <laughs> Be good, man. Peace. Yeah. Later, man. Peace. Later. Peace. Hey, gang. One more thing before you go. I want to talk to you about Indie Insights. Indie Insights is our bi-weekly newsletter and love note to the film industry, movies, and the creatives that make them, not to mention you, our esteemed listeners. Inside, you'll find curated industry trends, articles, exclusive commentary, and underappreciated films from filmmakers like you worldwide. And the best part is that it's completely free. So, join today at www.bonsai.film 
It just takes a few seconds, and once you sign up, you'll get the very next newsletter. It's that simple. Go to www.banzai.film to get Indie Insights, our bi-weekly newsletter, and join a network of film creatives like yourself. And don't worry, we'll never sell your information or spam you with a bunch of nonsense emails. Just the bi-weekly film industry goodness you need. And if you ever tire of Indie Insights, we hope not. But if you do, simply unsubscribe. No gimmicks, no games. So, one more time, go to www.banzai.film to get Indie Insights for free. And thank you for listening. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth Shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make Shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. These days, everything in ATL costs more. But somehow, Verizon costs less. As low as $50 for a single line when you switch. So while coffee is definitely costing more, Verizon costs less. And dinner in Buckhead for two has gotten pricey. Verizon, less pricey. Inman Park rent, that's not coming down anytime soon. But Verizon, down. Just $50 a line. Limited edition sneakers, through the roof. Verizon prices, through the floor. That designer golden doodle, so much more. A single line on Verizon, a fair bit less. Even a good old tried and true hamburger will cost you more. But with Verizon, the same good old tried and true service now costs you less. Point is, in a world that is always costing more, you can get more for less right now at an Atlanta Verizon store. $180 BYOD and $360 local promo credit applied over 36 months for new customers with one line in your own 4G or 5G phone on unlimited welcome plan required. Additional terms apply. Auto pay and paper free billing required. In times of congestion, unlimited 5G and 4G LTE may be temporarily slower than other traffic. Domestic data roaming at 2G speeds.